All right, so on the lift today, we have a super nice S2000 with a lot of Japanese specific parts on it. I'm not gonna go too much into detail because I really don't know every single brand, but this pretty much has to be one of the most JDM inspired builds I've seen in a long time. Doing a clutch on this, he's supplying a spoon flywheel and we're gonna do a Clutch Masters FX300. Our favorite clutch. There's a flywheel, here's a clutch. But well, one of the things that you've seen us talk about in the past, but I'm gonna show you it again, is the drive shaft bolts. I was just explaining to the customer, Honda has very good quality bolts. Pretty much every bolt on the car is a hard bolt and you don't worry about rounding them and stripping them to take them off. Well, these are just terrible. The socket bolts that hold the drive shaft on, well, the ones that we put in there, if they're bad, we have these in stock, we change them. If I can get this to focus, they're a hard grade eight bolt and they're a much deeper socket. That way, if you ever have to take it apart again, these actually come apart. They're not a cheap soft bolt by any means. So this is a pretty low mileage car with a factory clutch, but we had a hard time pulling the transmission off and we've noticed this, it looks like silver paint. That is anti-seize that somebody has used for the release bearing, which isn't the right stuff. You've seen us talk about that before. The grease you're supposed to use is magic grease, which is what we call it, Eurora grease. When you see over here too, I mean, it's sticky. It's same on here, somebody's used this and all on here. So it, rather than the bearing sliding smooth on there, it actually sticks, makes the clutch uh, actually feel heavier than what it is. And in some cases, the clutch won't disengage properly because as you release the clutch, this bearing should slide on here free. Well, if it sticks, it can partially hold the clutch slightly disengage, which will wear it out prematurely, which might be what has happened here. But I'm gonna clean all that junk off there and replace it with the per upper grease. So this silver grease is everywhere. Somebody must have figured out, I got a tub of uh, silver grease or space grease as we call it and they've put it on everything. Well, even though it's called grease, it's not grease, it's corrosion preventative is what it is. You'd put it on a bolt and you pull the bolt back in. See me? That way the bolt doesn't rust and it doesn't get stuck in there. It's not a lubricant. It's not designed to keep something low friction. You know, it's not like a grease. So someone's just used it and put it all over the clutch because it says high temperature on the bottle. It's not grease. I have mint in my mouth with my LH2 blue gum. Yeah, you don't want to mix it, but if you taste it, it tastes just like licorice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, new clutch is in. Time to put the transmission back on and we're ready to go. Okay, so another PSA, another free piece of advice. These bolts go here. Well, these are notorious for rusting, getting corrosion. You see they're open on the backside. You got a point on there, George, just so we know what we're talking about. So this is facing the front of the car, so rain and junk and anything that's gonna be on the road goes in there and it'll usually corrode these bolts. These are actually not that bad, but they usually come out white and corroded. So this is the proper use for space grease, which is also known as anti-seize. If you watch our channel, you know we use it. And we call it space grease. Why do we call it space grease? You gotta watch more of our videos. So dump a little bit on there put them back in it will do you a favor next time if you ever have to take these apart they will come out without being corroded touch that just rub a little bit of it in your hair why do you always want me to touch that stuff? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> that's for her the channel <laughs> can i help you yes i need to talk to you about a man in the uk really okay we're right there
Yeah, it's clear of the wood and everything, right? So I don't know if anybody recognizes this. This was in the video that we called the Valentine's Day or Valentine's Day surprise something. The picture has a pink bow. Anyway, this was a car that we did a whole bunch of TLC to. We took some dents out of it, replaced some of the interior parts. I think we did uh, the middle section and something else. Well, it's here for maintenance, which is just fluids and coolant flush. And it's also getting a brand new Honda battery. The battery was a little weak. Well, that fixes that with a brand new Honda battery. Also, this was already pretty rusted out, so George cleaned that, stripped it, and repainted it. Made that look like brand new. So, this is a very loved S2000. There's a lot of love behind this car. If you watch that Valentine's Day video, it might make a little bit more sense. So, just needs a quick test drive, double check everything. This one is ready to go. So we see this again on Florida cars, just because of the heat, the switch gets really baked and dry rotted. Well, this is the replacement, I'm trying to get the part number straight. This is the replacement knob. It's the same knob for the top and the bottom, but easy replace. It just pulls off and the new one pushes back on, super easy. So there we are, we're on. You can actually see the bottom one it is now almost like a flat, where the top one is kind of shiny but just run it back and forth, make sure that it goes for the full sweep. It should go from, you know, the bottom of the blue to the top of the red. Just make sure you did put it on the right way. There we go. So the filter is really bad. It's a good idea to replace it with the K&N replacement filter. Now the K&N filter, it's not the whole arm and the whole assembly. It just replaces this filter right here. It's a di direct replacement. It pushes in here and it has a little tab down here. I'll pull this up, you'll see it. It actually fits right back in the same spot. It's a direct replacement. It's the right length. Everything about it is super simple, but it's an improvement over the factory one. And not just that, it's something that you can clean. You don't have to buy a new filter in the future. All right, so there's a the K&N filter and the factory one. This thing is pretty dirty, but you see it's got the same pin. It lines back up. It's got the end that fits just the same. It pushes in there, just like this one. Makes your life much easier. And again, it's a cleanable filter. This one has a lot of oil on it. So there you see how it fits back. Line this tab up over here, but it fits back in the holder. Alright, so this one's done. I didn't film it because it was only fluids, and I feel like we've t uh, done two or three back to back. But transmission fluid, brake flush, clutch flush, and of course the differential, the smelly part. But again, very important. It's down top of your maintenance. Don't listen to the guy that tells you you can go seven, eight, nine thousand miles on an oil change, unless, of course, you don't care about the car. It's down top of your fluids and. Most of the issues that we see are prevented from maintenance. So we have another car over here. This is a supercharged car. We supercharged it about three years ago and it is here for basic supercharger maintenance. We keep track of most of the supercharger kits we've done from I think kit number 30 onwards. This was prior to that. So I don't remember but there's a few telltale signs tell us it's one of the earlier ones. But funny story with this, it originally had a turbo kit that kept having issue after issue and this was changed, it was taken off and we did the supercharger kit and since then it's been trouble free and in fact it says it feels faster. So one of the things we're going to do with this car is change the supercharger fluid which is this guy right here. I don't remember the service interval that Rotrex call for. Is it 25,000 or 20,000? I would never go that far. Yeah. This is supposed to be a bright blue. It's not terrible, but over time, 
this gets like a gray look to it you can't really tell in this light but the factory fluid is very so if I'm dotted on here it's already got like a brown gray look to it so this should be a bright blue so we're gonna flush the entire system and refill it and put the brand new fluid in there all right so the surface is new fluid and of course a new filter this is the Rotrex filter always the one that they provide with the kit should be done at the same time so you're gonna flush the whole system and this is the only fluid you can use you cannot use conventional oil it has to be this this is a special traction fluid again it's a really bright blue color so you know it's not the conventional oil okay so this is what the fluid looks like that came out again I want to find out the exact miles on this car and I'll post it in the description but it's pretty dark uh, the fluid that we just put in let me show you what it should look like it's a really cool bright blue color there you see that that's the color that it is new I mean it's very translucent so I'll find out the mileage on this but I don't like the idea of going high on the miles of anything especially the supercharger fluid I've talked to a couple of customers that have been 25 30,000 miles in their fluid and I don't like the idea of that at all so there's a PSA I would consider changing your fluid a little early if you've got more than 10,000 miles I would consider doing a change of course when you change your fluid don't forget to change your filter this is in the spot that Kraftworks call for we don't put it there we have a, a different placement just for uh, you know basically cleanliness but this makes it easier to change the filters right where you can get to it so contact Kraftworks go ahead and get one of their fluids and one of their filters so you can change your supercharger fluid and know that you're taking care of maintaining it for uh, longevity